G'day, Daniel here from Living Entertainment North Coast. And I just wanna say welcome to the home of one of our customers. They've been generous enough to allow us to film in here today as we've done a system demonstration for them today. And uh, the core of that system is the product that I'm talking about today, and that is the Audiolab 7000A. A little heads up before I get into the details, uh, this uh, customer's home is out in the country and there might be a little bit more background noise than you're used to from our videos and we do apologize for that. So I guess what makes the most sense when talking about the 7000A is talking about its similarities to the 6000A and what's carried over from that particular system. So much like the 6000A, you will find the same chassis, uh, the finish both black and silver is basically the same as well. The outputs on the back are largely the same aside from a few key additions, which we'll get into later on. And just like the 6000A and the 9000A, uh, the unit itself can be configured to run as either an integrated amplifier, which is how we were using it today, but you can also use it as a preamp or a power amp if you are that way inclined. Likewise, the display window on the front of the unit is basically exactly the same as the 6000A when you look at the shape of it, but it's actually got a little trick to it, and that is that the screen inside it is more along the lines of what was found in the Audiolab Omnia, which is pretty cool. So a full color display, which I'll get into later on, but it is actually a very, very useful addition. And honestly, that's where the similarities to the Audiolab 6000A kind of begin and end, at least in a superficial way. What really makes the 7000A interesting is actually its differences. I guess that really shouldn't be surprising because there are some pretty big key ones. So I think for most people, the biggest and most important change would be the amount of power that the unit puts out. So the original Audiolab 6000A put out 50 watts at eight ohms and 75 watts at four ohms. And that has seen a significant boost to 70 watts at eight ohms and 110 watts at four ohms. So that is a pretty big difference. And as you can see behind me, we have the Kef LS50 Metas, and I can tell you right now, it was a significant boost. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the Audiolab 6000A had what I consider to be one of the best ES9018 K2M chipset implementations, at least from what I have personally heard. I was very, very impressed with its implementation. But with the 7000A, Audiolab have really kicked things up a notch. So the 7000A actually comes equipped with the ES9038Q2M 32-bit DAC. So in layman's terms, what does that mean? Well, it means if you are feeding a transport into the amplifier or another digital source for that matter, which is, again, something pretty cool we'll get into in a little bit, but it allows you to not only do MQA unfolding, but you can also enjoy DSD up to 512, which is pretty damn awesome. So if you wanted to enjoy that with the previous model, the 6000A, well, you'd kind of limited to having that done externally and then fed into the system. So it's really, really awesome that this can be done directly in the amplifier itself. So on top of the usual suspects, your coaxial inputs and your optical inputs, 7000A actually has not only just a PC USB input, which is something that I am personally a big fan of being in everything, but uh, even more so, the HDMI arc is actually also integrated into this system. And uh, that's something I've been banging the drum for for years now. And I'm so, so glad that Audiolab have finally brought that in. And um, I can say this out of the gate. If you're looking at either the 6000A, 7000A or the 9000A, and you're looking at integrating this amplifier into like a two channel home cinema setup, that 7000A is absolutely the way to go because neither the 6000A nor the more expensive 9000A actually support HDMI arc. So if that's a critical part of your listening experience and your space, well, 7000A is the way to go 100%. Now, something else that I would really like to commend Audiolab on is actually the user experience and the way the menus and navigation work and the UI on that new display. 
Now, I absolutely love the fact that I can change the entire aesthetic of the user interface by clicking on the select button. You can actually turn it from a text-driven interface into an icon-based one, which as a computer guy, I love icons and I love the fact that I can see them from a distance in a way that I can't necessarily see a text menu on a, on a display the size of um, this one. So the fact that I can, yeah, turn that UI into one that's based on icons and scroll through that. I just, I just love that ability to customize the system in that way. And you can also make the icons tiny if that's more your thing, but I found that to be a little bit less useful from the lounge. But the fact that Audio Lab even gives you the option to change the visuals of the user interface is something that I haven't seen on many systems, especially not at this price point. So I really want to commend Audio Lab for that because any sort of customization on my side of the experience is something that I'm 110% for and I hope other brands follow suit and start integrating that sort of stuff into the screens on their devices because... Yeah, I think we live in an age where we should be able to customize these things a little bit and it shouldn't be hard. And all you gotta do is press that select button and you're, and you're done, you're gold. It's, it's really, really awesome. And likewise, on that same slide, the fact that this unit only has three knobs on the front, yet I found the menu so easy and practical and, and just, um, they made sense to navigate. Just using a couple of knobs is again, a really, really cool thing that I wanna commend Audio Lab on because it's easy to stuff these sorts of things up. It's hard to engineer a user interface for an amplifier. And it's hard to make it something that's easy and tactile to use when all you've got is a couple of, a couple of knobs and dials. So yeah, the fact that they've managed to pull this off, it's a very deep menu as well. It's got basically everything you could ever want except tone controls. Now for me personally, I don't miss tone controls, but I do know some people do. But uh, yeah, everything else is in there you could ever want and it's all easily accessible and modifiable. Probably most importantly is much like the Omnia in the 9000A, you can put VU meters on the front. Very important. Now another key upgrade over the 6000A is actually the phono stage. It has an upgraded phono stage and yeah, you can hear it. Um, uh, we did some comparisons today between the 6000A and the 7000A's phono stage. We were using a Project X1 fitted with the Otophone 2M Blue. Uh, we were using the Morning of the Earth soundtrack, uh, one of my personal favorite soundtracks ever, if not my most favorite. And uh, yeah, no, it sounded absolutely amazing. I was very, very impressed by the quality of the uh, internal phono stage in this particular amplifier. I thought it sounded, especially for the money, pretty damn excellent. And I guess, speaking of pairings, let's talk about the setup that we actually had here today. So for the customer, we were here to show off the 7000A, but we also brought the 6000A and the 9000A, so we could do some direct comparisons in this particular space to get a bit of an idea of the differences between these three systems. Now, for me personally, I've had a lot of experience with the 6000A, had a little bit of time spent with the 9000A and the 7000A, well, today was my first time. For the source, we were using the Audiolab 7000N Play Streamer, which is a really, really great streamer. And I'll be making a separate video about that as well. And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, we have the Kef LS52, the Meta. Yeah, these are fantastic speakers. And um, I'm very familiar with the combination of the Audiolab 6000A and the Kef LS50 Metas. And I've always found it to be a little bit on the cooler side, which isn't normally the sort of sound that I gravitate towards. But I've always found the combination to be very revealing and transparent for its price point, which is uh, why I thought it would be also be so good for testing the 6000A and the 9000A in comparison. It's a very revealing combination of speaker and amplifier, at least in my experience. So if I was to generalize before going in deep, I would say that this particular combination, it's not quite as cool as the 6000A with the LS50 meters. It's a, a smidge bit more on the neutral side, which, you know, Audio Lab amplifiers in general, I would consider to be pretty neutral and Kef speakers too, generally speaking. So I, it's always been a little bit odd to me that the 6000A with the Kefs had that little bit of a cool hint to it. That was definitely lessened, which 
definitely really helped with things like vocals, which I'll be getting into. But those Audiolab characters that I know and love were all still there. The bass was incredibly well controlled. The soundstage was wide, and that detail that I know and love from Audiolab's amplifiers was definitely there in spades. But like I said, these are just generalizations. What was interesting to me was the direct comparisons between these three amplifiers. So uh, let's break that down. So first of all, I want to talk about Ben Harper's Love After Love from his new album, Light Wide Open. This is a really beautiful song and it's an emotional song. You can feel Ben Harper's emotions through the recording. That texture is kind of really what sells the emotional resonance of the track itself, at least to me. There is a, a lot of decay in the guitars in that track, which sound absolutely beautiful. And there's a lot of smaller details that come in later in the track, which it's a very short track, but a lot of details and you can kind of feel them like height wise actually lower in the mix in terms of actual verticality and there's a lot of space around them which you can feel which is really really awesome again at a, at a amplifier at this price point to be able to pick out visible space around something in a sound stage uh, whenever I get, whenever that happens I get excited but whatever happens at this price point I get very excited now, comparing the 7000A's performance on this track with the 6000A's the 6000A was a little bit more closed in and it didn't have as much dimensionality to it, or as in terms of verticality. But these are pretty small differences. This wasn't a giant jump, and it could be the simplicity of the track in terms of its mixing and presentation, but the 6000A and the 7000A were pretty close, and I think a lot of people in a you know retail space listening to the two would have trouble picking the differences. The 9000A, on the other hand, which is you know almost double the price, well, there was definitely a difference there. <laughs> Definitely sounded a lot warmer, uh, a lot more spacious, generally speaking. And uh, there was a real snappiness that I didn't really pick up on either the 7000 or the 6000. But again, this is an amplifier twice the price, so I was kind of expecting a jump. But of course, this was just the start of my listening experience. Another track that I thought made for some interesting comparisons was Cyrus by Bonobo from their album uh, The Northern Border. The North Border? The North Borders. So the first thing I noticed out of the gate, the kick drum at the start of this track, punchy, tight, snappy, sounded so good with the 7000A. I was loving it and I was like, okay, we're off to a really good start here. Then you got the brushes coming in. And they image incredibly well on a diagonal. We got one up here, we got one down here. One is kind of like secondary to the other. A little bit of rhythmic thing going on. And yeah, it sounded so crystal clear and it was so precise in its presentation. Then about halfway through the track, we got this instrument. It's a percussion instrument. I don't know what it is. It sounds kind of like someone popping like a metal lid off like a juice bottle. <laughs> but I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. What matters is the physicality of that sound. It's like smack bang right here in the middle of the sound stage. And it's coming out at you. It's deep. It's, it's, it's 3D. It's really got a really nice sense of physicality to it. And I was like, okay, this is really, really killer. And then after that, the second half, that's when things start getting busy. And the amplifier remains completely composed. It didn't matter how many drums were going off. We got kicks, we got snares, we got synthesizers, and they're all going off at the same time. There's some drones and some pads, and just everything is just crystal clear in its presentation. And I'm like, this is, this is beautiful. This is great. Love it. And then hopping over to the 6000A, all of a sudden, the kick drum's not as tight. The spaciousness of the presentation is kind of pulled inwards a bit. It's a bit more veiled. I'd say the main sacrifice when you go from that 7000A to the 6000A is actually the depth in the mix. This is where I really started to notice the key difference because up until now, they've been what I would call or some would call audiophile differences. You'd really have to know what you're listening for to pick them up. But I did notice that the, the actual presentation, the soundstage, that depth definitely came in significantly with the 6000A. And while it still sounded unreal, and uh, you know, I love the 6000A, that was the first time I really noticed, okay, this is where the jump is really happening. 9000A on the other hand, again, you do get that significant jump where super open, super spacious, the whole mix sounded so tight, um, which I really loved. 
what I thought was actually a synth during my first two listens, I, I realized it was a didgeridoo because I could actually hear the breathing uh, as, <laughs> as they were blowing into the didge. Now, I think it was a sample and not someone playing live, but um, that did make a difference. So I guess, you know, that extra detail in the sound of the 9000, yeah, it really, really did make a big difference. But again, double the price. I would expect that or hope for it anyway. Now, hearing the way that composure worked as Cirrus got more complicated led me to Viagra Boy's Return to Monkey. This is a track that is pretty damn busy in its sound mix. And on lesser systems, it can sound quite muddy. And um, I thought it would be a really good test. It's a post-punk banger. Uh, yeah, I love it. So with the 7000A, you've got this beautiful swirling saxophone just spinning around the sound mix, which sounded absolutely unreal lead vocalist with his gravelly <laughs> cheeky voice always planted firmly in the center in a little bit put towards the front and then there are other sections where there are some uh effects put on his voice um and he's pulled a little bit more back in the mix so the depth again in the presentation of the 7000a sound really got me excited and got me pumped with the 9000a it sounded completely open and even at its busiest moments um you can hear every little thing that's going on and i do mean every little thing because there were some little percussion pieces that i hadn't noticed on either the 7000 or the 6000 and that's not very often that i, I play a reference track and uh, hear things i haven't noticed before so that was a pretty thrilling sort of like little little experience there fun and games were over though it was time to get serious let's listen to some classics towns van zandt i'll be here in the morning beautiful song absolutely absolutely gorgeous it's so simple in its production just Towns and his guitar, and there's a couple of little backing guitars and a harmonica, and that's uh, and, and a, ba a double. I think it's a double bass, um, just quietly in the background. Beautiful, beautiful track. And this track really showed off the 7000 A's dynamics, because while Towns is definitely up front with his guitar, and it really, you know, sounds like it takes up 80% of what you're listening to. There is that 20%, which is just another acoustic guitar gently noodling away in the background while occasionally a harmonica comes in and wails. And the double bass is something that's so subtle in the background that you might not even really notice it until your second or third time listening. It is so subtly integrated in, but once you hear it, it kind of becomes a real integral part of the track. So yeah, the 7000A really had those dynamics where not only were the acoustic guitar and the double bass and the harmonica nice and quiet but they also felt like they were far back you know how sometimes when you're doing sound engineering it's easy to think oh i want something to sound far away i'll make it quieter and it's not that simple with this track it really sounded like towns was with his uh up front with his backing band you know a couple of meters behind him and you could hear that space between them in terms of depth and that was really awesome it's not something that every amplifier can accomplish. And going back to the 6000A, again, while the dynamics were there, it did not have that 3D soundstage that the 7000A had. And to wrap things up, I went to Goitier's Hearts A Mess. Again, this is a pretty complex song in terms of its sound mixing. It's largely sample based, and these samples are all of different sound qualities. They're from different eras, so they have different signatures. The way they've been integrated in together is pretty actually incredible, really, when you think about it, when you hear it. How many elements are coming together to make this song work? The 7000A, everything sounded snappy. There was a beautiful amount of detail there. The samples that had surface noise on them because they were sampled from vinyl, you could hear that. You could also hear other subtle bits of static from recordings on tape and everything was harmonious still. It was so detailed it made you wonder how it was put together, which is a pretty cool feeling really. There's also some, I think the egg shakers, this is something I always test when I do listen to this track because it is um, similar to what I mentioned in a previous track. There is a, a diagonality to it where you've got one low and one high. And if things are set up correctly, you should get those different heights and be able to hear those. And with the 7000A, that was absolutely the case. And not only could you hear that height, but you could actually feel the hand coming forwards and backwards in the mix. You got, you know, that sense of dimensionality with that particular instrument, which again, isn't something you experience on every setup, but here today with the KEF and the 7000A, that was entirely the experience. Moving to the 6000A, the height was still there funnily enough, but you lost that dimensionality with 
the egg shakers. And again, with the 9000A, it once again, basically just enhanced everything that was great about the 7000A. Although I did notice with this track in particular, the bass control over the kefs with the 9000 was definitely most noticeable here. But then the commonality between all three of these audio lab systems with this track is the drum solo towards the end. It sounded pretty much identical on all of them. Like it sounded excellent. So, you know, it's really funny, like the different things that come out to you with different amplifiers and what things stay the same. And yeah, that, that was kind of my experience with the 7000A today with the Kef LS50 Metas. How do they sound with other speakers? I don't know yet. I have not had the opportunity to listen to them, but I'm very excited to take the 7000A and test it with quite a few because I think it's a really compelling amplifier, especially at its price point. Now, if you were to ask me who I think this amplifier is for, I would say based on its feature set, it's, you know, for people who are into streaming based on its DAC implementation. And it's uh, for people who are looking to integrate a high quality integrated amplifier into their home hi-fi, like their lounge room system, you know, they want, they want good sound while they're watching TV and movies and they want to be able to enjoy music. This amplifier really hits that sweet spot really, really well. If I was to recommend a streamer to go with it, I would obviously recommend the 7000 N Play since, well, it's designed to go with it and they look basically uh, the same in their presentation. So, you know, everything looks complete. The most interesting thing to me about the 7000A is where it sits. Its biggest competitor is the Audiolab 6000A because of how well engineered that unit was and how good a value it is for money. But 6000A doesn't have those features like HDMI arc, doesn't support DSD, I can't plug it into my PC, can't plug it into my television, you know? So I think 7000A's big claim over the 6000A is not so much in its sound quality, which is definitely better, but it's more so in its feature set and the flexibility that feature set gives you. And I think that's where the justification for the increase in price as a model comes from. And I think that's a really intelligent way to go about things when you have something like the 6000A, which is as successful and sounds as good as it does for its price. Comparing it to the 9000 is interesting again because the 9000A is a better sounding amplifier, absolutely, but it doesn't have the features or the convenience of the 7000A when it comes to integrating it into your home. So yeah, it's a bit of a funny one in that respect, but I think if you're looking for that balance, the 7000A is 100% the way to go. I'd like to once again thank our customers for allowing us to film in their beautiful home. It's been an absolute privilege and uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. Now, if you have any more questions about the 7000A amplifier and its speaker pairings, well, reach out to us. You can comment in the comment section below. You can email us at info at length .com.au, or you can give us a ring with the number on screen. You know, we're all on this hi-fi journey together. We love learning new things. And we love helping you experience new things. So please reach out. Thank you as always for watching. Bye for now.